Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, RockAuto.com, State Farm, and WeatherTech. Now by now almost everyone's heard something about the Cadillac Alante, how it was designed to sell in the same class with Mercedes-Benz and the best European cars, how it was styled in Italy and how its body is being built there. Yes, we've been talking about the Alante for more than two years. Well now it's here, complete with its $50,000 price tag. And now that it is here, just who can afford to drive it? If anyone can afford to drive the best, it has to be J.R. Ewing, right? And that's why when he selects his next new car, it's likely to make a Texas-sized statement. Reportedly, his new wheels will be the Cadillac Alante. The producers of Dallas are trading in J.R.'s Mercedes SL for the new Detroit Turin Hybrid. They'll give Cadillac an image boost that even a great car design can't manage alone. Even Mercedes has taken note of this first Motown Ultra Sports Luxury Interloper. After all, how many $50,000 plus two-seaters can you sell, even in America? Well, Cadillac thinks their share is around 6,000, and with JR's help, the first year will definitely be a sellout. But why so much confidence in a car from a mark that's been losing cemeteries full of customers over the last decade? Because the Alante is a different Cadillac. Caddy's old Detroit Think has been replaced by World Think. While the Alante's 99.4 inch wheelbase comes from a cut down Eldo Seville chassis, it still boasts such status items as all independent suspension and four wheel anti lock disc brakes. While the engine is still Cadillac's aluminum alloy 4.1 liter pushrod V8, it now has one of the most advanced sequential port fuel injection systems available. Horsepower is up 50 to 170 and torque is up 30 to 230, and the engine makes a delightful exhaust burble that is decidedly un-Cadillac. Most points of view on the Cadillac Alante make good impressions. The Pininfarina styled and built body is conservative yet modern, smooth yet crisp. Well thought out details include everything from headlight washers, to low effort door handles, to a neatly concealed gas filler door, to the best integrated high-mounted stoplight on any convertible yet. Two tops come with every car. The winterized hard one is easily removed by two people. While the line soft top that stores under a hard boot is manual, our only real concern is that its many guides and latches need perfect alignment for good operation. Inside, appointments abound, and there are only two options, color and a cellular phone. These Recaro seats are specially designed for the Alante. They are supportive, with soft leather to hold you in place, yet only mildly firm. Both seats have 10-way electric adjustments, and there is a two-position memory, plus an adjustment that puts the seat in best position for getting in and out. The area behind the seats is for storage, and there's a folding door for getting to the trunk. Luggage space is good for a convertible, but the broad tail lights make for a high sill to lift over. A novel cover for the temporary spare will expand to accommodate a full-size flat. The canted dash stores a top-notch automatic climate system and Delco Bose cassette stereo in a tower above the shift console. At the moment, it contains only a four-speed automatic connected to a viscous clutch. Its sophistication is only matched by the liquid crystal instrumentation. The shape of the main gauges mimic analog units, and they do a credible job. The engine readouts are clear in the daylight, yet can be turned off for less distraction at night. They reappear if one of the Alante's many computers spot a problem. Alante Electronics make wide use of multiplexing, a system that allows one wire to do the work of many. That means fewer connections and increased reliability. The Alante's lighting system will activate if a sensor detects a fading sun and substitute nearby lamps if one burns out. Yet the fact that the Alante is electronically luxurious should be no surprise. So what about the way it drives? Well, that was a surprise. The Alante is an extremely competent road machine. Handling is remarkably precise for a luxury car with only a modest amount of front-wheel drive push and body roll. It maintains its composure even in tight corners at high speed. 
Some of the credit goes to its exclusive Goodyear Eagle VL tires. They strike a good compromise between high performance traction and comfortable highway ride. Indeed, Cadillac took great care to ensure the Elante is quiet on the open road, especially with the top down. Wind buffeting is minimal, and you can hear yourself think without shouting. Stopping is, as expected, excellent. The Elante also has exclusive use to the third generation Bosch anti-lock system. Stops from 55 on this prototype gave a consistent average of 115 feet. Only acceleration seems lacking in the Elante, and then only in comparison to the Benz 560 SL. Zero to 60 took 9.3 seconds. That's about two seconds slower than the SL, but still as good as many other imported performance cars. The automatic transmission shifts very crisply and at the right places. Quarter mile, a reasonable 17.3 seconds at 80. A five-speed manual would help, but while one is being considered, few Elante American buyers would order it. It might be part of an export package that would also include simpler analog gauges, because Cadillac is considering the supreme test of selling the Elante in Europe. Which brings us to the key question for the Elante. With its Pininfarina lines and high technology, does it have class enough to turn all of Cadillac around? Well, probably not. But Cadillac tells us that this is just the first in a line of world-class caddies. It's an amazingly good effort. So good that it doesn't really need an introduction from JR. It'll get along right well on its own. <laughs>